Hi, friends. So hear me out. This always happens. And usually, I roll back several months after last talking about a book I read. And I give some, some little story about how I've been so busy, I couldn't read. And this time, that is not the case. <laughs> um, I've read quite a bit. I just haven't recorded anything. So, again, it's the same spiel I always give, right? I'm like, oh, I like to record these right after I read the books because then I get, like, I can capture how I felt about the book. And it's, like, really cool and great to have that on film because then I forget everything I felt about it and uh, I like people to go back and be like oh I actually really like that or oh yeah I did think that was an interesting point but I did it again I read a book and um, well I read this book um, well we'll cover that topic first and it's been a hot minute <laughs> so I I feel like I had all these ideas because knowing that I record these for myself I think about what I want to say. It's almost like my own little personal book report that thankfully nobody creeds me on. <sighs> and now it's been months. It has been months. So, um, items on the list. I have two of these coming up. This one, currently, here. It's existing. Um, over at this beautiful book that I will speak about. Um, beautiful is not the right term to describe it, but we'll just pretend. And I also read these two books, which are a fun time. Chronicles of Narnia stuff, and those will be separate, but together. There's a bunch of books in series, I've only read the first two. We'll combine them. Moving on. This not beauty beauty. A Prayer for the Dying, a novel by Stuart Onan, Onan, I'm assuming Onan. This is interesting. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Um, this book, when was this published? Like a good while ago. This is not a new book, okay? Let's establish that fact. Copyright 1999, yeah. This is not a new book. This book, however, is about a pandemic, um, which is really interesting because like reading about the response and kind of how this played out, this pandemic played out in this hypothetical, it's not even really that hypothetical. Let's give some background. Um, it's set in Friendship, Wisconsin, which as you may be able to imagine is tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, and it's just after the Civil War. There are some references to it, lots of talking about soldiers, lots of, um, like PTSD type conversations that are not necessarily dove into but brought up nonetheless and it's about a very real disease shocker so it's it's interesting reading about this small town it's told from the perspective of the sheriff, the undertaker. I think he has another role as well. It's kind of a... Oh, it's the pastor. How could I forget? Uh, that's an interesting dynamic to throw in there as well. This book is very good, but it is very dark. So let's just get that out of the way. And I'm not... Spoilers abound, you know, like they're coming. So check out now if that's not your thing. If, if that's not your thing then do I recommend it? Yes, if you are ready to take on a darker book that is, I mean, the entire tone of it isn't happy, right? Because it's set in a pandemic. <laughs> so you take from that what you will, I suppose. I do recommend it if you feel that you are mature enough for it. But anywho, spoilers from here on out. So if you haven't read it and you don't want spoilers, then this is your warning. This book, as I said, is very interesting to read from the perspective of um, all of us here who have just recently gone through our own pandemic that is still kind of 
going on, there are still, you know, effects of it everywhere. It is not fully over, um, but it is not new by any means anymore. In this book, it's a small town, it's like a small community, and the reaction when the first people who are, like, sick is found is very much like, we don't want people to panic, we don't want to, like, spread the news that this is here and have everyone freak out and then try to like scatter to get away from it because you don't know who's infected you don't know oh my gosh excuse me you don't know kind of like where it stands and that is a viewpoint that gets I mean they kind of regret it later right because they don't tell people about it and it just continuously gets worse and there's always that what if in your head of like, oh, well, what if I had done something? What if I had said something sooner? What if we'd put in measures sooner? Would it have ended differently? So that's an interesting one to contemplate, um, knowing kind of how things have played out for us here in our little current day. But I will say it was interesting. I say interesting too much. Everything's interesting <laughs> to me, apparently. Um, it was strange that this book is told in the second person. I have not read a book in the second person in like so long, so, so long. It felt very weird at first, but once I got farther into it and kind of saw what happened, I understand why it's, it makes sense for what happens. I will say that, um, there are some some choice experiences within this book. Um, let's just get the you know the elephant in the room for me anyway was the necrophilia. You know anybody else? Item interesting. That was cringy to say the least. And cringy is not the right word because cringy makes it sound like oh like oh, why would you write that? And it's not like a why would you write that? It's like a you're kind of in the head of this author, or not author, Ooh, the sheriff. <laughs> you're kind of in his head, and you, it's so bothersome because while I would personally never uh, take part in anything like that, um, you do kind of understand where he's at mentally, and it's such a strong representation to show just like how far gone kind of mentally he really is because it's strange but he's able to you know continue doing most of his duties he's still the acting sheriff he's still trying to enforce quarantines he's still doing everything that he can to keep people from leaving or entering the town to contain it he's taking logical steps while simultaneously shielding himself mentally by just like not acknowledging that his family's dead um which is so extreme but also such a good look into like kind of the psyche of this man so while bothersome and like quote unquote cringy um it's impactful I would say those were honestly the parts that hit me the hardest like yes the all the talk of quarantine and um, trying to treat the people and the I'll tell you what the entire book I was convinced that the main character was going to get sick and it just never happened it's like what are the odds like he is like the one guy that seems to be fine because it didn't sound like he was necessarily uh, taking the correct precautions so I was kind of on the edge of my seat about that the entire time I kept waiting for it to happen, waiting and waiting, and eventually I was like, well, I guess he's really just not going to get sick. But the way that it plays out and the way that you see him deteriorate mentally, you kind of understand where, where that's happening and why it's happening, like all of these stressors that are put upon him, and the way that at the end, the fire coming into town just kind of wrecks everything it's just 
it's kind of a little reminder of um, you only have so much control, only so much. And when I'm the lesson that we have all learned these last few years, I'm sure that when it comes to things like illnesses and sicknesses spreading, we can only do so much, but like nature is going to take its course and then the fire also coming through and it's a, a large fires like that, especially when this is set, it's like, there's not much you can do. They did everything they could. They're building, you know, the dirt trenches and they're bringing in all the water that they can. But like, if you have a raging fire, then you, sometimes you just got to let it burn. You can't, you just got to get out of the way and like let nature do its thing. So it's a good reminder in that sense, but it's a, it's a bit of a, a dark and a sad isn't quite the right word like it is sad sad doesn't like command um the level of emotion that i would want it to for describing it but my cat is she likes to rub her face on books so the books on here and i don't know if there she is oh goodness Let's all just pretend my hand didn't cover half the screen. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with this book was the kind of the interplay of his mental thoughts and where he was going with that and how religion plays into it because he is also the pastor of the town and there's a lot of dialogue um, that comes from him in his head about like why things happen and when you should put your trust into a greater power and just kind of what all of that entails when something so terrible is happening around you and whenever you are a figure in the community that is looked up to to bring kind of like faithfulness and that sense of like steadiness so I thought that was a really interesting topic brought up. I don't know that I want to dive into a ton of it right here, but I will say that I think that's something that um, is very real for a lot of people. It's something that people who are like faith-based, um, if you have some sort of trust or belief or um, sense of comfort that comes from a higher power, then that's something that I'm sure you've kind of asked yourself at some point or another in your life. So I thought that was super interesting and a very realistic kind of dialogue to bring up for somebody, not just a pastor, but, um, you know, for people in and out of the church. It's, it's just something, it's one of those things that we'll never have a definitive answer on. Like, you know, Jesus isn't going to come down and just be like, yes. Um, so I thought it was interesting. I think it's, I think that's a dialogue to have, um, probably not on a YouTube video, but like, you know, with your friends, with your family, if you are a person of faith or if you're not and you're just trying to understand the way that others view things. So anywho, those are kind of my thoughts. I that had like no cohesiveness so if you haven't read this book then you know you're probably not here anymore because you probably have no idea what I'm talking about but that's okay because I read the book and it's I'll have my documentation now of how I felt about it way too many months after I read it I couldn't even find this book and you know what I only keep books in two places my bookshelf and my nightstand and I couldn't find it for the longest time it's been so long since I read it it's tucked away in like the tiny corner of a shelf that, that I haven't seen. Whatever. Um, yeah, ta-ta for now. I'll be back in the exact same clothes to talk about these suckers, so see you then, I guess. <laughs>